Bernadette Mayer is a, a poet we've been wanting to bring to this stage for quite a long time. Uh, she is a, a, a poet who virtually defines uh, and continues to redefine what it means to break the mold. Uh, Robert Creeley perhaps put it best when he said she is a consummate poet, no matter what's for supper or who eats it. And as you mull that over, I'll tell you a bit more <laughs> factual things. Uh, her birthplace was Brooklyn, and she is a key figure in that astonishing group of poets dubbed the second generation New York School. Uh, her many books include Memory, a text created to accompany an art installation comprising over 1,000 photos from daily life. Midwinter Day, a book-length epic about the shortest day of the year. The Desires of Mothers to Please Others in Letters, now regarded as one of the great urtexts of feminism. Poetry State Forest, as amazing a demonstration of the poetics of place as you'll ever encounter, and so many others. Bernadette describes one of her books, Studying Hunger Journals, as an experiment in recording various states of consciousness. I, I think actually all her books probably fit that bill. She is regarded as both a great experimentalist and a master of that most traditional of forms, the sonnet. She writes about family and friends often, but she writes about them as if they were our family and our friends. This spirit of generosity pervades her work in the poetry community. She famously co-edited Zero to Nine with artist Vito Acconci and the small press United Artists with Louis Warsh. In the 1980s, she directed the Poetry Project and is renowned for her innovative writing workshops and her ever-growing list of writing experiments. To honor her generous genius, her collaborative nature, and her spirit of community, we felt that in inviting her here, it would be most appropriate to invite a few comrades along with her. And so we're very pleased to have join us Philip Good, who shares with Bernadette a vista between the Kinderhook and Tassawasa Creeks in New York. Uh, both creeks could rival the Minnehaha for best name, maybe. Uh, and whose first book, Untitled Writings from a Member of the Blank Generation, is among my current favorites. I hope you'll check it out in the uh, bookstore in the lobby outside. Uh, along with Phil, we have Jennifer Carmen, I think one of the brightest of the legions of younger women poets who proudly place themselves in the lineage of Bernadette, and whose work can be found in the text sound epic Alice, or as I like to say, Alice, and in the new anthology, I'll Drown My Book, an anthology of women's conceptual writing uh, that I also highly recommend you fight over in the lobby, in the book signing. Uh, these three poets celebrate the possibility of the moment and the notion of the poem as not something apart from, but rather a part of life. To conclude this long-winded introduction, I'm going to quote from the last question and answer of uh, Bernadette Mayer's interview with Daniel Kane. And Daniel says, okay, we should wrap things up. So let's get back to the sonnet. What if William Shakespeare were to walk up to you one day and ask, Bernadette, how does your poem fit in to the definition of the word sonnet? And Bernadette responds, first I'd invite him to dinner. He'd be a good guest. We could eat rabbit, stuff like that. And then I'd say, William, it has 14 lines. And then he'd probably say in a dubious kind of tone, yeah, 14 lines. <laughs> then we'd see what happens next. Please welcome Bernadette Mayer, Philip Good, and Jennifer Carmen. Uh, I'm going to read initially from... Uh, this project that I've been working on called The Helens of Troy, New York. And uh, uh, in the place where I live, which is East Nassau, there is a Helen of Troy living across the road from me uh, who grew up in Troy. And, you know, she inspired me to find all the Helens in Troy, New York that might 
be Helens of Troy, you know, contrary to the face that launched a thousand ships. So here are some of them, and you'll see some of them. This is the Helen Reese Cestina. Mom still lives in South Troy. Now everything is much more different. There aren't as many buses. There are no markets. There was a mural of Gulliver in the Troy Library. You don't get too many people interested in your name. Corbett is Helen Reese's maiden name. There's a lot of Greek revival architecture in Troy. Name Troy, like Ithaca and the other Troys, to honor the people in Greek democracies, a concept as liberal and different as a fancy private house is from a public library. Soon, in downtown Troy, there'll be a co-op market. Uh, unfortunately, it failed. <laughs> That's an aside. <laughs> you know, just like Shakespeare would say, make. <laughs> <laughs> For a long time in Troy, there was no market. If you'd lived somewhere else, would you have a different name? What are the chances you'd go to this library and be a Helen in a city in upstate New York named Troy? If you had your way, how would things be different? Would you prefer being the head honcho or one of the people? Politicians often brag about being a man of the people, but do you ever see them at the market? Maybe for that to happen, you'd have to be a Helen of a different Troy or a woman of a different name in a non-existent market in Michigan where there is a Troy with a post office, some people, and a library. Socialism's okay for Americans sometimes. For example, the library, the post office, the schools where people can learn about ancient Troys, or all the Troys, even the ones without any markets, by the names of Price Chopper or Hannaford, names that might appear in our dreams, where a different I'm sorry. Uh, where a different landscape or map, as it were, leads to a different way of perceiving like books in a library, which can lead you to a, on a quest, already inherent in your name, to find the place where people, all people, freely and unworriedly go to a crowded market, whether it's in Syracuse, Utica, Rome, or Troy. You can't help but think it's different even without markets, a movie theater, a library, you still will get people interested in your name. This is uh, Helen Worthington Bonesteel. I could never understand why my mother named me Helen. Sleigh rides to school with a buffalo robe on, Dog, dog barking. Everybody belonged to the Grange. My father played the flute with a missing finger, peddled milk. My mother, my brother broke his leg, hated school. I got married three times. Oh my God, Troy's on fire. <laughs> Helen Hypatia Bailey Bailey. I met this Helen whose name was Bailey, but she married a guy named Bailey, 
but they spelled it different. So it's B-A-I-L-E-Y and B-A-Y-L-Y. Besides not being from ancient Troy, Helen Bailey hails from Australia. Her middle name is Hypatia. Her mother thought if her first name was Helen, her second had to be the Greek math mathematician stoned by St. Cyril, whom she pissed off. So Helen Hypatia Bailey met a nice main man named Brian Bailey, and they became the brains of Troy. He taught geology at RPI, and she astronomy, lecturing probably on Haley's Comet, till he and she, now Helen of Troy, retired to a farm near this here tr Troy that I, the writer, am ne near to, too. In Australia, women were relegated to kinder, kirken, and kuchen, children, church, and kitchen. But when I met Helen Bailey Bailey, she was carrying a sign that said, Troy, back on track. We met in front of the Burden Ironworks, once powered by the world's biggest water wheel, where wonders made horseshoes and bells and stove, where workers, I'm sorry, made horses, horseshoes and bells and stoves and fences around Aries. Do you think one of the Baileys played the ukulele? <laughs> now, though, RPI's president receives the highest salary in the country. Troy's the Troy's proctors, owned by RPI, is to be raised, depriving Trojans of their heritage again. And poor Troy becomes poorer, perhaps the poorest, not something to drink a Troy cocktail to. Now, a Troy cocktail is Campari lime soda, also called a Joe Brainer. Uh, this is Helen Fuller, a gold Helen, a Steiner Helen, an interactive Helen, the free verse Helen, the coal mining Helen, Mimi, a revolving lavender Helen, a Camp Hill Helen, the massage light Helen, a massaging Helen, that's a kind of Pennsylvania therapy a Sawinski jellyfish, a Helen who just happened to wind up being a Helen of Troy. Hey, Helen, the sun's coming out. Wait up. Finally, a fuller Helen. To always be reincarnated as a Helen. Would you remember the irises in your front yard? What color were they? Maybe Gerda planted them along with tulips, like a convertible auto, a 1965 Ford Galaxy in pink and purple. The glove compartment is as refrigerated as a stream, still too cold, too cold to be in in June. Helen F Fuller looks like Kate Mullaney. Let's frame these remedies like the eyes of a Sawinski jelly, jellyfish, so we can always see beings at ease. Helen Willett. A lot of people my age don't know about Helens of Troy. I grow red lilies. At 28 years old, we go to the bars. We come across the bridge in Cohoes and go to the tugboat. My dad used to call me Crash. A lot of things are in walking distance around here. The trouble's kind of moving up. My house is 100 years old. I so know it 
and it's right on the tip of my head, my tongue. I'm always late. Green, green. You never know what the future brings. It could happen. Helen Davis O'Neill. I am a collector of dolls, bells, all the stores burned down, here, down, locations of bakeries now and then. We thought we were the only one, Troy, Ashley, before Troy. We went to the volcano a lot. Any of the big movies played at Proctor's. They're all in different places now. We were a mixed marriage, Catholic and Episcopal. The day boat to my, we walked every place. I guess we're living longer than we thought. <laughs> Helen Crandall Whalen. And this is a villanelle. Everybody died. I'm learning to control my temper. I took off. It was fun. I loved it. There were cam cameras in the store. I don't have to look. Everybody died. One Helen's enough. Trust me. I love reading books. I took off. It was fun. I loved it. People think I'm stupid. I went to Proctor's Theater. Everybody died. There's nothing more to say. My hair is braided like a family. I took off. It was fun. I loved it. If you did something wrong, they punished you. One Helen is enough, trust me. I don't have to look. She was mean. She didn't like any of the Crandalls. One Helen is enough, trust me. I had to clean other people's houses for a dollar a day. My hair is braided like a family. If you did something wrong, they punished you. One Helen is enough, trust me. I don't have to look. She was mean. She didn't like any of the Crandalls. One Helen is enough, trust me. I had to clean other people's houses for a dollar a day. My hair is braided like a family. I'm 66 and smart, smart as a whip. They'd call me the orphan brat. I took off. It was fun. I loved it. When you're an orphan, you do anything. I went to practice theater. I'm learning to control my temper. It's been rough. My favorite colors may be yellow. Everybody died. I took off. It was fun. I loved it. Uh, Helen Parsons says Tina Hello, this is Paris I used to teach in Cambridge I'm from Whitehall Everything we do is pretty much archaic The teenage world is very egocentric Helen Melville lived in Lansingburg This is a 1920s house there is a library in this house. Helen of Ancient Troy's lover was Paris. The History Channel did a documentary on Lansingburg. It was not White Hell, but White Hall. To feel the you or the earth is the world's center is egocentric. To feel this is true is incorrect and archaic. Swimming in an unpolluted lake might be archaic, especially if the lake is near your house. A narcissist is like a teenager, egocentric. Once I heard a woman say, Mon Dieu, at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. Do women make love in Whitehall? They must make love in Lansingburg. Troy's most bourgeois area is Lansingburg. To have children is both archaic and not archaic. Once I met a man 
off the grid in Whitehall. If the sun didn't shine on shine, he couldn't watch TV in his house. Maybe I should have called my son New York City the way Paris was Paris. To think New York's the center of the world is egocentric. To think your son's cute and looks like you is egocentric. The safest part of Troy could be Lansingburg. You never think of dangerous places in Paris, but I'm sure there are some, though the ideas as archaic as having a gallery in your own house. In ancient Troy, not up-to-date Whitehall. Let's hightail it to Whitehall in the 21st century, full of egocentric Copernicans, build a sun-filled house and pretend we're safe in Lansingburg, where even video games have become archaic and will make better love than Paris in Paris. I wonder if there's a Paris in Whitehall. Is it archaic to be egocentric, like a balloon released in Lansingburg, big as a house? Uh, this is Helen Green, who is the person who started this whole uh, project in my mind. She lives across the word from me. Uh, Helen Collins Bullard Green lives on Tassawasa Lake Road in East Nassau. Inspiration for the whole Helen of Troy investigation. First dated at Proctor's Theater in Troy. A down-to-earth Helen. She has two titanium knees now and a pocket full of rye, a baker of pies, a frequenter of the Bijou and Ted's fish fry. Who knows what she's up to behind that house? But now it's winter. A new storm told us so. No more mowing, Helen. The grass isn't growing. But wait a second, it is on the sunny side of the road. Uh, it's really funny because on Helen's side of the road, it is sunny. And on my side of the road, it's shady. <laughs> so that's what that's all about. But nobody else but you will ever know. <laughs> I got one of Helen's to pose naked for me because it's traditional in the Helen of Troy myth that uh, she stood up and everybody, that the mythological Helen of Troy and everybody like adored her beauty. So I figured I had to do this, but it was tricky. <laughs> Naked Helen Carmody. Carmody. Helen Carmody with a candle. Who are you? Your knees bent in an attitude of exhausted posing, your hair covering vests, lips touching sheet. Welcome to the family. And crux of what it means to be a Helen of Troy. Darkness moves around you, but in this light we can see you, knowing nothing about you and your sweet feet on the ancient floor. Uh, this is uh, Helen Marcy Nelligan. My grandparents owned Nelligan's, a bakery I'd go into a room full of gallon buckets of cake frosting. The Lake Placid Bakery has pistachio shortbread cookies. Troy's a mythical place, true to its origin. There's nothing, there's something about growing up in a ruined city to live in a decaying mansion. Is Faulkner-like in the middle of Troy? 
is Washington Park, to which you need a key. I didn't feel good about my key. Once baby raccoons fell out of their nest there. Don't go near the Nelligan boys. Uh, Helen Freeman Meg Free I never could figure out how to pronounce this. Helen Freemeg it's M E A G Mac. Okay. Helen, 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 Helen. New York, New York, New York, New York, New York. Troy, 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 Troy. Fire, 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 fire. Bicycles, 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 by. History, 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 histo. Arsenal, 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 arse. Woolworths, Woolworths, wool. Drapes, 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 drapes. Family, 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 family. Ants, 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 ants. Cat, 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 ca. Blue, black, blue, black, blue, blah. Sleigh riding, sleigh riding, sla. Atrium, 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 uh. Gelato, 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 guh. Tosca's, Tosca's. Tosca's, Tosca, ghosts, 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 g, Mount Ida, Mount Ida, Mount I, 18-year-old cat, 18-year-old k. Well, I used to get a lot of laughs by reading this to audiences in and around Troy, where I had a line, uh, the current then mayor of Troy was this guy named Tatunjian. So I had a line where I would read, I don't know what happened to that line, where I would read Tatunjian, 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 Tatu. <laughs> oh well. Okay, and this is the last of the Helen poems. Uh, it's called Maroon, Muckle, and Me. I worked for the deputy mayor of the city of Troy. Growing up was mayhem. There were six people. I'm one of five girls. You are in charge of the phone. My son's a video game junkie. I'm the responsible Helen, not the fun-loving Helen. I am on time. Everything's there at Proctor's. He looks just like his ancestors. I want Troy back to where it was. I have a ghost doorbell. One of my boyfriends, Michael Layton, was a donkey. My father's name was Theodore Albert Mayer, Hageman III, 7830 was the number of my phone. Russell was sitting in Inwood Park reading the Iliad when a woman leading a brown dog who became Hector said, Hey, do you want this dog? I have to go to Troy. Troy never figured in my mythology of girls. Ma'am doesn't mean what we think it means. Ma'am means Freddie Stagel rang my doorbell. He said, Hi, I'm looking for Helen. A long time ago, Helen was here, but that was in an earlier time. She may have moved on. Her ancestors lived here. This lobster is them. They went to Proctor's. There's a mural of the Helens of Troy musical in Proctor's lobby and a painting of a ringing ball. I know exactly where most of my ancestors are buried, along with a slew of felons. Helen was a common name at the time, as was Catherine, Emily, even F 
Philomena was. Mayhem means loss of limb, as in ma'am, maiming. What mayhem in words. People I grew up with used the word junkie loosely. Anybody could be a whore or a junkie, especially to girls. A strange and bookless childhood was had by the maiden's mayor. We never knew there were Troys. There were any Troys but ancient Troy. Nor were we allowed to talk to non-Catholics on the phone. <laughs> Growing up in Troy might have been better. It was easy to walk around. You could see movies at Proctor. That was in the time before drug addicts. You'd hear the church bells sinuously announcing that another Helen was marrying a descendant of his ancestors. When my mother died, I was informed by phone. It was Christmas Eve, and all through the house, no mayhem. Jane Fonda went to the Emma Willard School in Troy. We always called junkies heroin addicts, not junkies. I once met Rollo May's son and thought I was more May than he. My sister and I were the first girls to go to college, unlike our ancestors. No one made a fuss about college in Troy. That's how it was. Nowadays, there aren't many people named Helen. I met an orphan named Helen who escaped to Proctor's. She's smart as a whip, clear as a bell. It'd be easy to idealize Troy in that time. In our family, college was thought a waste for girls. They just type, do steno, answer phones. Besides, they're supposed to have babies, said the mayors, who found my mother snooty, my father's fiddle-playing mayhem. My Uncle Charlie's girlfriend wasn't a junkie, but an alcoholic. Oh, to grow up in Troy. When being in Troy made sense for everyone, boys and girls, so far there were no junkies, and it was safe to walk everywhere, no cell phones. It was also okay to court mayhem, and even to know who was the deputy, deputy mayor. One of the Helens tap and danced up a wall one time. Helen looked so much like her ancestors, she was mistaken for a ghost when she rang the bell. This is now, but that was then, when there were movies and plays at Proctor's. And if you were lucky, you lived in Troy, and your name was Helen. Helen, do you remember the time in Troy on Halloween when all the girls who were Proctor's ancestors rang your bell and your phone at once, but the junkies had broken both? Hi, Bernadette and Phil. Hi, Minneapolis. I'm going to read a little bit from my book, Alice. Um, it's been out for about two years. I think of it as a text sound epic because it's written in 11 parts. Um, and it exists very much in book form, but it also exists as a performance. I think of it as a polyvocal text, which means that when I read from it, I always ask other people to participate with me. Uh, we're going to do a five to seven minute reading. I'm going to need three volunteers from the audience. One. Two more volunteers. Two, three. Please step over here. Bernadette, you can choose a card. Okay. Do 
guys are going to be a chorus on this side of the microphone. You can them together. You each have a word. And so we're going to be reading for about five to seven minutes. And our chorus here, Bernadette and Phil are also part of the chorus. During any time of the reading, you can say your word. Uh, you guys will have to share the microphone. Um, Alice is made for improvisation. So it's a book of poetry that I have to think of it as a kind of word for. Um, <laughs> finished because I'll be sitting down reading. I will step back to this part of the stage when we finish. Um, every performance of Alice is always different uh, since it is a text made for multiple readers. Um, so if you encounter me in the book again, it'll probably be totally different. Um, yeah. Thank you. Ahead of time to our chorus. There is no right or wrong way <laughs> to do it. <clears throat> Underneath, 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 underneath. Orange. Even if my head would go through, it would be of very little use without my shoulders. Rain for rent. The liquor store has milk for a dollar ninety nine. Extra large eggs for ninety nine cents. Enjoy the sport of country club Three living. Way. Freeway Hello. entrance versus throughway or expressway. Your shoes are weird. Mm -hmm. That store sells donuts and Chinese food. Practice. Self, serve, church of Christ meets here. Cattle for sale. And underneath. Yes, but I grow at a reasonable pace, True, not right, in that ridiculous fashion. Okay, rub your thumb and index Hello. finger together. Away. Not sure. <laughs> Shrug your shoulders. Practice. Through Good way. luck. Through Keep way. your Orange. fingers crossed. Through Be quiet. Put <laughs> your finger on your lips. Underneath to be angry. Poke your finger. <laughs> you may also try to Orange. beckon. Orange. Just a moment. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. The throughway looked orange. You might knock and I could let you <laughs> out. Sandwiches taste better when they are cut diagonally. Practice. Feed the mayonnaise to the tuna. It's April. Hello. Now it's April again. <laughs> the dog still looks up. In a dream, Dad says, Underneath. you are dead too. Practice. Would a Coulda, shoulda. No, Mo doesn't say ouch. Then you should say what you mean. Orange. Keep your feet oh, moving by apple Range juice. Way. Stand outside what it feels like to not be on a bus. Wonder where all the roads go when your period will come again. Watch a man walk his dog. Say hello to the girl who says hello to everybody. What's your name, she asks, the old man with cowboy boots, hello. red baseball cap, going to <laughs> Reno. My name's Peter, like Peter Rabbit. Practice. I'm not particular as to size, only one doesn't like changing so often, you know. Feet smell. Noses run. Writing is a way of life. You lose head from your heat. You lose heat from your head. Oranges. Wake Orange up. Way. Can't find shoes or notebook. Green River is the watermelon capital of the world. To look different. To have a bigger smile. Everybody has one and all must have Prizes, children applying, drive with care, have exact fare ready. Escalator out of use. Please deposit litter in baskets. Beware, bags look alike. 
Practice. All seats bookable in advance. Hello. 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 We regret any inconvenience. Consider, my dear, she is only a child. Things to learn and why. See a schoolhouse built in 1910. Writing as practice every day. How to give love. Or if inch. You can't go over, go under. Chaos is always apparent. Some people say curious things. Yesterday, a man was walking. How many thoughts a day we write. Hear silence, sound of close eyes. Besides, that's not a regular rule. You invented it just now. Nagasaki, Adam Bomb, Epicenter, Boys Ride, Bicycles Around and Around and Around. One boy drops his juice, stops his bicycle quick to pick it up. They run and chase each other. A girl with two plastic bottles sings, makes music, waves Hello. at Grandma who sits watching her play here. Just way. I've had nothing yet, so I can't take more. A sway of bamboo Underneath. in the wind, like they would fall Hello. over. Don't appear so strong, but green. Where Oranges. am, or where going, or how to get there. Not sure if it is past or future. Sun, I'm back. Familiar. Good morning. Could be going anywhere in any part of life. Amazed by kindness. That's the reason they're called lessons, because they lessen yeah. practice from day to day. <laughs> Hands sticky, thumbnails stained, too small meek on. Mm -hmm. Oranges. Gifts from two kid friends. They are seven. Laugh and tell them you are seven, too. Two. Listen for words to understand. Why to sign your name on their Hello? father's petition. Why the government wants to move Hello? the town cemetery. <laughs> their dead families. Reverse Hello? the conversation. Underneath. How was Through your day? It. What did you do? Where are you from? Take care of the sense and the sounds will take care of themselves. Oranges. Underground tunnels. Strangeness of war. <laughs> a place where 175 Japanese men killed themselves. After Practice. Americans Undo smiled, Undo held Undo through babies, it, through gave it, through out it. chocolates. Hello? Oranges! Okinawa is blue-green <laughs> ocean. Comfort of water. Middle of night, sleep Oranges. stops. Oranges. Hot. Sunburn. Go for Wait. a walk. <laughs> Tranquil in a dream. Feeling of somewhere totally unknown. If that's all you know about it, mm. you may stand down. No problem, no relationship, no want, don't want have, don't have, don't understand, just looking, hot, water, Underneath. beautiful, sorry, where is, excuse me, goodbye, wait. Hello. Do it. So <laughs> 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 well, this is actually my first book, Drunken Bee Poems, that, you know, I self-published a lot, stapled together, and there was something going on here about the 80s, so I felt I would read this again because this is from the 80s. A 
A cause to fight in the hot summer night Over a flower, over a dram, over a bottle, over a power man Over a lover, over a gram, over a sour man No answer, just noise in the street light Landing on my consciousness, flipping through my mind Letting ego's ear Remembering a grand time. Beauty achieved by naked thoughts of reckless youth in ageless summer days to travel down river for more meaningful measures of sublime. We don't write about flowers anymore. Mm. Leave me out of this we business. <laughs> Leave the emotions in if wanted. Say hello to the Blue Jays who say, I love you, and there's no way to let go. In a song, freshly cut flowers are closed by landlords, but that doesn't stop Emily D from drinking the more. Nobody said some more. When all the inventions and constructions are extensions of the human form, Read Buckminster Fuller. Did Little Bear get stung by a drunken bee or a lover of horses? It's not just an unpaved path. It's not just sound of construction and grass, not to mention the gas. It's not just, li it's not just a little orange cloud. It's the pounding of my heart. See the sunrise over the city See the back of liberty, see a heron fly, see baby white tails run, all on the mm. account of little sleep. Which street does she rise above, those empty taverns, those empty hearts? Another <coughs> day of money, another day of progress, another day to get a start. Now, hungry for peace. Hungry for no wars, hungry not to have needs outweigh means. Decrease the needs, decrease the ways. Not to feel joy, not to forget the darkness. Freedom from pain, freedom to think. Something in my pocket tells me freedom to observe. Orange bars and triangles falling on the largest rectangles on the block. Herbs can cure. Many are poisonous. They are used for the poor. <coughs> Kept in a body, seeking vision, discovered nothingness as solution. Besides, outside distraction, collective energy produces reflected images repeated through displacement. And there's an herb on the ice and one rose in the milk bottle and more in the bowls he brought her. Finally, there's a pull from behind. Come, let's enter that empty river. Paved, walking on escape. Faces grinning up tightness. Spare change, mister? Past the welfare hotel. Dream reality transports miles away to isolated hills with city view. It's not easy to be a flower doing nothing all day but waiting, waiting to be tasted, waiting to be another. Traveling peril fluttered, no longer flapping, but floating about, no longer trembling. Reality brought forth through noise, recorded in silent nights, turning slowly, seemingly hopeless, Nothing but blue here <coughs> over the ocean, here in the heart, missing a heart. Time to start with travel. Meanwhile, many snakes sang at the garden party, hitting the open trail. They drank screwdrivers, eating a cardboard cactus. The snake called Lucy went for a swim. Dream reality transports miles away to isolated hills with city view in mind, and there's an herb on the ice, and one rose in the milk bottle. 
Ship, blow that horn. Wind, blow those palms. Bridge, open those gates. Poet, celebrate. She spent her life secluded, expressing wit and sediment, concerned with immortality and nature. The fire within competes with the reflection from below the water. Pardon my coughing. <clears throat> yeah. We are about to start a round robin. <clears throat> Bernadette is first, so I will be better by then. <laughs> Tag, you're it, Bernadette. This is a poem that I wrote for a show at the Guggenheim <coughs> by this artist named Amy Franceschini, <laughs> whom I'm sure you all know. Isn't this impressive? Wouldn't it be great to always get to read from a piece of paper like this? Uh, she was doing a show at the Guggenheim about the fact that they had discovered uh, archaeologically a uh, uh, shoemaker's shop in Greece and the Socratic philosophers uh, differed. Aristotle believed that uh, philosophers should converse with kings and Socrates believed that uh, philosophers should converse with shoemakers. So this show was all about shoelessness. And here's what I wrote. Uh, I was studying paleontology at the time, too. <laughs> it could be that I'm a fish, or was one once. I remember thinking Aristotle was an asshole. It is like a dark, cozy garden. I didn't know then about shoes and shoelessness cultivated away from the light and bathed, how vital and symbolic it was to the cynics in a profligate torrent of sulfur. This was in the days when philosophy and claims that live there grow to an enormous size. It was your main avocation, your vacation, your way, like pampered dahlias of paying your mortgage Rocks found in the Achaean trust. Crust, thought Socrates. Philosophers 2,500 <coughs> million years ago or more should converse with shoemakers. The atmosphere lacked oxygen, whereas Aristotle felt they should talk with kings. The oxygen slowly built up over a billion years. We, in the 21st century, still have this dichotomy. In one of the obscure parts of the paleontological consciousness, remember in the 20th century, when we, with other jellyfish-like curiosities, tried to convince our elders, ocean-going Medusae, that hippiedom was the answer. This was when the seas advanced over continents. They'd always say, what would you replace the system with? A rich sedimentary record. We'd say everything should be free. There were four kinds of jokes. Remember sitting at the table, the mother-in-law joke, the sexual innuendo. It was hard to swallow the mashed potatoes. Jokes about foreigners, mm. jokes about politicians. But we were right all along. Charles Doolittle Walcott, Walcott discovered the Burgess Shale. Aristotle did us all a great disservice on the surface of carboniferous flakes by famously advocating cause and effect. Fossil leaves carried the fine veins we know. We'd 
all have been better off going sideways or backward, like or from living leaves. Things don't lead upward and get improved. If it seems soulless to attribute, nor is everything higher, better, the glories of arboreal form, north isn't up, south isn't down. To natural design alone, my dog Hector never wore shoes. Underestimating an appropriate sense of wonder, Socrates, a cynic, used to hang out at the extraordinary and creative inventiveness, inventiveness at the shop of Simon the Shoemaker, which life has repeated, repeatedly shown where he found thought more relevant. I became a land-dwelling mammal in a house, that of sandaled kings, 100 years old with a stone foundation, idiotic uptown types of thinking. It used to be a Christian church spawned by the values of paintings. Uh, you can see the rafters upstairs and nod, odd rare fruit, the nuts nobody's heard of. A rabbit, rabbi made it a boarding house. Let me tell you how Hector got his name. You need waterproof shoes to be here. Our friend Russell, descendant of a family of days, because we're, we are near two creeks, uh, was sitting in Inwood Park reading the Iliad, the Kinderhook, and the Tasawasa when a woman approached him with Hector. Sometimes they overflow onto the ground you walk on. She said, I have to go to Troy. Do you want this dog? It's halfway between the sunniest and least sunny places. Like Hector, I wear the same things outside as in halfway between Albany and Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Of the Paleozoic er errors, there are Cambrian. I'd like to be free as the birds of the air, wouldn't the Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian. Hector the dog bought the farm, but never wore shoes. Permian and Carboniferous, Jurassic comes later. Did you ever hear the politicians and psychopaths use the same mental stuff in different ways? Did you know that many of the fossils found in the Burgess Shale were misclassified as f at first to accommodate the discoverer's view of life. Have you ever heard of the Burgess Shale? Did you ever have a trilobite? When Stephen Jay Gould was growing up, the other kids called him Fossil Face. <laughs> <laughs> I have worked hard all my life, and I still have no house, no wife, no car, no flat screen TV. What does life mean? The answer is somewhere in Hallucine I'm sorry, Hallucinea. Hallucinea. A weird and followed offspring of some evolutionary stem of life found in the Burgess Shale of in British Columbia. Nobody will ever know where it would have led. You can find its picture on the internet, which is now the memory of everybody. Wouldn't it be nice for gas station attendants to give you gas for free? <laughs> Even better, cars don't need gas, and they are left by the side of the road for you if you need one. Right now, the founder of Facebook is on the cover of Time. Why not you? Or me? Or Sir Thomas Brown? Or that guy who frowned when presented with potatoes that are mashed, not smashed? Or a martini made wrongly? I have more shoes than you do. Look, they're all here, but mine won't fit you. My feet are large for a tiny woman, but small for an award-winning restaurateur selling food 
from Brooklyn in Manhattan and finding wine on the sea floor that's been there longer than a fossil. Could it be true? Philosophy chicks kiss better than paleontology <laughs> chicks. Do tell. The very best kissers are women who hang out at the sidebar drinking aquavit straight till the cows come home. I dare to opine. Be carpenter. Tie the curtain with a smaller curtain. It might grow to be a full curtain. Or don't tie it. What do I care? Getting down to brass tacks on an ocean of dinosaurs in haystacks. Almost never does a peninsula get surrounded like in an old famous western by water. Hey ho, nobody's home. No meat, no drink, no money have I known. Put your hands together for the shoemaker's quantum peninsula at Ultimus Thule near Uluru. Do words actually have a meaning? What do, does actually, actually mean? Can I possess a vision like an object, like shoes? These are my shoes, but are these my lack of shoes? That is, is my shoelessness mine? I am barefoot. Does that mean I am shoeless? Is my sh soul also shoeless? What does it mean? for a soul to have no shoes. Does it mean my soul lacks support? I saw a sale on inner souls at a shoe store recently. Maybe an inner soul is what my soul needs. <laughs> we should ask the man on the street. He says, I've got no soul. Might he mean the other kind of soul? Is there any solution to this conundrum? Isn't it a sol isn't a solution an Aristotelian concept? If we prefer, prefer Socrates, do, the, do we then not believe in solutions in all of Western culture? Did Aristotle do irreparable damage to us souls, to all of Western culture? I always thought of a soul as a giant communion wafer in the middle of your body. Is the soul the heart? When I go to sleep, is that sleep my sleep, or everybody's who's asleep at the time? If sleep were a world, always there, you had entered into, like the dream world. Was that my dream then? Scram! Get out of my face. Did the mail come? Will you get the mail? Is having shoes red and not having shoes green? Alec Baldwin. Looks a lot like Alec Baldwin. <laughs> the only way I can think to follow uh, a poem like that is with some more audience participation. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you know that uh, in Chicago, I've been working with a group of poets, artists, and activists on a project called The Human Micropoem. In case you're wondering about the human micropoem, let me tell you. The human micropoem is a call and response choral form utilizing the human microphone at the Occupy movements to amplify the speaker's words by those listening. The speaker says a line and that everyone who can hear repeats it. I got interested in this idea of the human microphone and then in Chicago, the human micropoem the idea of holding somebody else's words in your mouth and, and in your body, uh, thinking about the idea that language starts in the body. Uh, I also wanted to have a solid solidarity action <clears throat> here in Minneapolis as the Chicago teachers continue to strike. I don't have my cell phone on me, but I'm assuming still at this moment they are. So we're gonna try a human micropoem right here at the walker. back on. Thank you. So micropoem means that uh, everybody mm -hmm. gets to repeat a line. Everyone's part of the poem. Usually we don't have a mic, but I will use the mic that's here. Mm. That means you, audience. Mic check. 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 
We are the human micropome. That means you. Anybody can say a poem. And the chorus repeats it. We are the chorus. This is a poem that I wrote called Work. I'm reading it today. Here in, Minneapolis, here in Minneapolis, as an act of solidarity, as an act of solidarity. For, the teachers, for the teachers, the students, the students and, the parents, and the parents who have been organizing in Chicago, who, Chicago, who want to make the schools better. This poem is called, this poem is called Work. Work. One has to have a reason, for living. a reason for living, a guiding philosophy, a, guiding philosophy. a, purpose. a purpose, a goal. A goal. The, best way the best way to communicate, to communicate. An, idea an idea is to, is to act, it act it out. No work, no, work. no, eat. no eat. I want to have Something to, say something to say about my own, about my own. Destiny. destiny, something I, something I care, about. care about, something of, something of. Value. value, something, something. Important. important. I'm going to read a collaboration that uh, I wrote, we've all wrote together, and we also had um, a poet from Albany, uh, James Bellflower, and uh, we were on our porch, uh, which we often call the porch school. What's the porch school? It's where we uh, just hang out and talk about poetry. Is there applications or enrollment forms? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, you can talk to us about that after the reading if you want to become a member. Um, to Obama from the Porch School. Easy, X-O-X-X-O-O-X-X-O-X and a box. Asses askew, solutions on the eyes, like hibiscus novellas, leaves of ideas, in a field or porch, impatient with flowers for chairs. Globy. Where, how could you, doltishly sounding out demonstrations of the dollar bills, the world is a spoon, the spoon works, and hard is the range of the floor. Lucky dreams line tumbling, shapes block wrong cross, down poor nails across a balance, place muscular color as down poor leaves like a train, Oh, whisper Obama in the attic around the wheel mm. of a wagon. If you be the dolphin of love, glancing light pages soak up color. Tag Bernadette, you're next. Okay. I know what I'm going to read. <laughs> but I guess you don't. <laughs> Not yet. Damn it, she got me again. <laughs> this is a combination of uh, a poem that I wrote about the uh, Brent strike in our neighborhood in 1848 and this uh, hideous creep who recently bought the field behind my house. And it's called Local Politics. Inspired by the American Constitution, I hate having all these motorized vehicles. In the farmers, the farmers in Bern and Schoharie, Columbia, in the field, which nobody but me thinks, Albany and Rensselaer counties, is mine. This is the origin of criminal activity. Decided to end the system where the patroons 
The field guy can't stop. He's a lunatic. The 1% rented their land to the 99% of farmers. Zooming around in his bobcat, he and extracted crop crops as rent or even money fans the fires of my wrath. Property is robbery, not just a philosophical stance. The kinderhook, the farmers dressed as Indians in calico. Creek Bank is lost to the enemy and poetry to scare the rent collectors tarred and feathered them, is now dependent on field activity. Down with the rent, was the cry. Nobody joined the army of the self-avowed prick. Advocates, advocates of paying rent that were called up renters. Would they? The red-winged blackbirds, because the leases were legal contracts, are beginning to do their mating displaying auctions of livestock to pay rent were sabotaged long ago in other weather. This year field, by feeding the sheep salt and shooting the cows, was occupied by the Mohican Indians for something, so the farmer would get reimbursed, the owners, but it was still a woods, then cleared for hay. Of all the land were Stephen Van Rensselaer IV, Van Voorhees, now made into a white man's manicured lawn, Livingston and others who could afford to be descendants. When we first moved here, the then hayfield of weight, there don't seem to have been any women involved, owned by an unseen guy from Queens and hayed by Jay. They made the calico dresses for the Indians. The men, then Janice Lundreville, bought it and put up signs, defeated the patroons and their cronies, but we still have no cutting of trees. Then Jay stopped hanging. We're guessing, rich people, corporations, and the Vatican. Maybe the field will become a golf course, owning land, and you need money to buy it. We can all be caddies, carrying the owner's irons. The account I read was in Tin Horns and Calico. Lest we don't have to be shackled by them, the Cardinals, published by the Byrne Historical Society, Come back, and all is mud now, April 1st, 2012, by Henry Christman, whose father was a local poet. I don't think it's right. The GBF gets to have, GBF is the guy who bought the field, uh, gets to have. You can also find it in Howard Zinn's People's History. The great blue heron fly by his property, of the United States in the chapter called Where is the Luna Moth's Cocoon Now? The Other Civil War, widespread against the rich. The GBF is freaking out now because people swam in 1848. People believed all men, at least, except for slaves, were when he wanted to fish. Two women from Fawn Ridge Farm, created equal, except for one can lord, or, lord it over another, rode horses in his field then, and one fell off. I wanted to read a little bit from the new anthology from Le Figue Press. I'll draw on my book, uh, Conceptual Writing by Women. Uh, the title actually comes from one of Bernadette's poems that appropriates from Shakespeare, so another Shakespeare reference again. Um, and if you read uh, Lainey Brown's introduction, she really talks about uh, just the importance of uh, work that uh, Bernadette and other writers have done as far as um, our lineage of writing. So. 
I thought I'd read some of my art poems as far as being here as a walker. Sorry. It's okay, Bernadette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Art is a concept. Art is a process. Antonyms for Jenny Holzer. A big ignorance can go a short way. Good intention can withstand bad results. Agitation is less conductive to creativity than is security. Flourishing can be a mm. beginning itself. Eating a little is lawfulness. Faithlessness is a non-social, not biological law. Taking close rein to your detachment is a dishonest way to defunction. Occasional regard does reflect a coarser insensibility. Ideals are replaced by unconventional goals at an uncertain age. Just misbelieving something can't make it happen. Relinquish something in reserve for safety. Leisure is a death-forming activity. Manual leisure can't be exhausting and noxious. Quiet can't be friendly. Often principles are less cheap than people. Pleasure can't be a very negative thing. Reduce girls and boys different ways. Sacrificing yourself for a good cause is an immoral act. Taking a weak stand publicizes the same position. Similar things must not be less worthless. Nonviolence is impermissible, even distasteful often. Peace is not a defilement right. You are not a victim of the rules you die by. Okay, I'm going to read from my untitled works from a member of the blank generation. Um, untitled number 12. We were told what not to title the piece that began with a walk that became a memory that became a poem that could not be titled. A memory of our walk. It mentioned the cardinal flower brighter than the bird. It mentioned wild ginger before a list of names like Hannah Wiener, a story from our history. If only someone would mistranslate these writings into French so I could mistranslate it back into English and even use words that don't seem to exist, like in the title of a poem by John Ashbery. <laughs> Well, this isn't fair. I'm trying to figure out which of these poems would be most interesting. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a really short poem. Uh, this is an imitation of, I had my students in my workshop, uh, I gave them all books about a particular scientific discipline and mine was electronics. And we, we tried to do imitations of other people's poems using metaphors and similes from the discipline that we were studying. And this is a poem by Robert Burns that I'm sure you'll recognize. And it's called, My Love is Like a Red Indicator. <laughs> My love is like a red indicator that's newly sprung in thermoelectric assembly. 
My love is like an auto range interface that sweetly played in tweezer tip sets. As fair thou art, my bonnie bit drivers, so deep in matrix display displays I am, am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, when all the toroid cores gang dry. When all the tubings gang dry, my dear, and the banana binding posts melt with the clamshell cases, I will love thee still, my dear, while the dual alphanumeric displays display. <laughs> Art is a concept. Art is a process. <clears throat> Affirmations for John Baldessari. I will not make any more boring poems. I will not make any more boring friends. I will not make any more boring desserts. I will not make any more boring decisions. I will not make any more boring revolutions. I will not make any more boring wishes. I will not make any more boring jokes. I will not make any more boring war. I will not make any more boring love. I will not make any more boring problems. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Untitled number 23. On the way to a secret location, we found broken colored glass. We found loud motorcycles and town cars. We drank out of boots and leaned on each other. We pleased and forgot to watch the sunrise. We went out into the cold and watched the stars. We walked across parks and tried to focus on the lack of education. The angle of the moon hid behind a cloud. Distraction from gravity caught our breath. Patterns of unseen elements refined our arguments of transgressions into monologues. Blissful melodies were heard from afar. Interrupted fantasies were replaced by dizzy sights. We spent theories wisely. We lit words and felt them pass through the flora and fauna. Yeah. Good. Uh, this is a poem that uh, I gave to a friend in Albany. And he rejected it because it has the word fucking in it. And you have to realize that I'm talking about hummingbirds. <laughs> so I'm really talking about making love and not just saying fucking gratuitously, which I am sure I could say. But anyway, I'll read this poem to you. It's called Sky... Oh. And I also have to say that I was obsessed with, uh, in the English language, how you can use ing all the time. So for a while, when I was writing, I would just use ing words. Uh, and it's called sky writing. I saw birds fucking in the air like hummingbirds do. I saw a grackle looking charming. I saw the displaying of a red-winged blackbird mating. I saw the sky clouding over, then thunder and lightning for a bit. I found myself wondering, is English the only way of talking like this, or am I dreaming? P.S. I saw the chipmunk running up the pole of the station of bird feeding. P.P.S. <laughs> Phil's chainsawing, but it's raining. P.P.P.S. Now it's hailing. P.P.P.S. It's like storming <laughs> the magic citadel with words ending in ing. <laughs> Art is a concept. Art is a process. Haiku for soul wit. Perception theory. Unexpected directions one artist may or any form implies 
the former and ideas chain cannot imagine. Involved that logic, a general direction. Process is the will. Work and mind to who? On the artist, the concept, material, learns. Painting and sculpture are used for each work cannot. Ideas alone leave. Eventually, and most important, completion carried out blindly. Conventions of art reluctant, reluctant to sentences when words midway through. A consequence if words are used and they process necessarily. The art of the past, the components perceive it. The artist may not, cannot be rescued. The artist's mind physical, the process complete. Perception is from, rather than rationalist, subjective are these. Hmm. Untitled number 26. L wanted to know who Dash was. <laughs> M sat next to B the night before. V is M's older man. They've been an item since she was illegal. The letters of the host's full name were used to write a poem. Mm -hmm. Some of the people we know have taken their middle name for their first. <clears throat> Remember not being able to put a name on a face? H saw words on people's foreheads. <laughs> Sometimes people wear name tags. <laughs> B told me she just finished the TPR correspondence with the other that the other B gave her. Soon we will pick up M at the double happiness bus stop, but not the M from the first stanza. <laughs> what if you were a Dash? What fun you could have. What if Dash should meet another desirable Dash? <laughs> All the Dashes have different POVs held together by the same dark matter that inhabits these words. Let X equal Y. Is everything linked, or is it up to the smallest unseen, never might be seen, neutrino to piece this pu <laughs> puzzle together? <laughs> we know other curious phenomena exist besides the question of identity of certain characters that take place within the pages of published poetry. Some will never know the truth, even years after it was written. So as one famous baseball personality used to say, A, B, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Bernadette, can, can we read neutrino poems? What? Can we read the neutrino poems now? Yes. Do you want me to help you yes, find yours? Yes, we can. Mm. Can you tell them about neutrino poems? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jennifer and I have been, well, maybe we will have written We're trying a history to. of science We're trying to. in poetry form. And we just started. So we're doing, we're doing these, we did these poems about neutrinos. Uh, so we'll read those to you. And we also, with Phil, we did a poem about the Higgs boson particle, also called the God particle or whatever it's called. <laughs> But you know what, it's really, it really comes from an article that What's-His-Name wrote about, and he called it the goddamn particle. <laughs> so that's why people were calling it the god particle. But anyway, we'll read you our neutrino poems, and then we'll do a little performance of our Higgs boson poem. Okay? Great. Should I begin? Sure. Do you want to tell them anything about the structure, or you just want to read? The hardest assignment ever. 
Or you said this was like the hardest poetry assignment ever. I oh, was we set ourselves the task of doing the most, what I have found to be the most difficult poetry assignment ever, which is to write a ten-line poem in which you alternate uh, metaphors with similes. With gerunds. With gerunds, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, try it yourselves. But in the process, I mean, it's really difficult to do, but uh, in the process of doing it, we also barraged ourselves <laughs> with uh, information, which included uh, uh, an etymology of the word clitoris. So that crept in here, too. Kind of gratuitously, perhaps. I, I, I got one I of my know. favorite lines of poetry out of it. So, <laughs> so you'll see it in each of our poems. <clears throat> uh, mine is called A Neutrino Casino. <laughs> a lepton, the neutrino is a clitoris. To us, a clit maneuvering past the explosion neutrally Neutrally, not neutralizing. It is a Scandinavian country, taking no part in anything moving. A conscientious objector, unwilling to be part a party to any collision. But a secretary of state, she has some weight. You know she has been being there. Over 200 trillion, trillion, trillion massless earths are passing through the sun every second, not to speak of you, you muon monster. <laughs> P.S. If I say to my sister, I'm not me, I'm a neutrino passing through you, is she still the same? <laughs> I think... <laughs> this was about four years ago. I think Bernadette was done like before lunch, and I was sweating it at lunch. <laughs> I'm not quite done with my poem yet. <laughs> Vital statistics of neutrinos. A neutrino is form and content. Neutrinos enjoy <clears throat> exhaling the universe at 3.15 a.m. A neutrino is ideas and solutions. Neutrinos practice writing Buckminster Fuller poetry. A neutrino is mental ingenuity. Neutrinos believe in fighting against inanimate slavery. A neutrino is a trillion, trillion, trillion clitorises. It's my favorite line I've ever written. I'll say it again for you, sir. A neutrino is a trillion, trillion, trillion clitorises. <laughs> I can't read it with more laughter. A neutrino is a trillion, trillion, trillion clitorises. Neutrinos escape interacting with the speed of light. A neutrino is the great experiment. Neutrinos hate sniffing gravitational glue. <laughs> and now, for our final performance. Phil, do you want to say anything about our God particle poems? Not really. No. We're going to collide it. That's what we're going to do. We have three, <laughs> three titles, and they are Particle Physics Whirling Dirges, or God Mashup, or Discovery of the Higgs. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. The Higgs boson, we're reading it all together. No, we're doing stanza by stanza. You start, don't worry. Oh. We're jumping in. Take oh. two. <laughs> okay. The we just both. finished last month, so it's, this is like brand new poetry here at the Walker. Well, I thought we were doing it all together. We are going to do... Because I thought it would be funnier. The, the, the round robin. <laughs> oh, Let's okay. Let's do the round robin. Okay. Can you, okay. Can you do the title, so can you do the title funny, again? It's funny, though, if you think about it, to listen to all our... Yeah. Words kind of colliding. They're, they're going to collide. Like, Just yeah. Through and we'll jump like, we're, we're oh, jumping okay. In. Can you start with okay. the title again? No. Oh. <laughs> Shocking. You do it. No, I'll do it. 
Particle physics. L- let's all read the title together. Ready? <laughs> One, <laughs> two. Uh, no, three. I won't do it. Particle physics. <laughs> <laughs> Whirling. <laughs> Dervishes. Or. God. God. Mashup or. or Discovery. Of the... Higgs. Higgs. Boring. Okay. The Higgs boson particle is a little thing in physics. Anywhere there is space, there is a field. What if the boson particle was never named? Keep going, Bernadette. That proves... How particles acquire the Higgs mass. Boson particle. We've been is looking. Little thing in physics. Same place. Anywhere there is space. Same quantum there's a field. state. What if Higgs the boson particle has a memory was never named? Broken into hypothetical fermions. The Higgs boson particle for, is a little yeah, thing in physics. Anywhere there is mass. space, there is a field. What if the boson particle was never named? That proves how particles a acquire mass. And a large We've been looking. For it, same place, time. same and quantum state. Is guaranteed. Higgs in has a memory broken Anywhere into hypothetical fermions. For it for a, there is for it for a long time, it and its mass, we found it in 2012. No need to the difference between a barracuda and a large man swimming, his role in the universe is guaranteed. Anywhere Solid there is space, there the is a field. Spontaneous radioactive decay. No need to smash atoms. Einstein used a chalkboard. It's Building part of the compact now, like muon solenoid experiment now, or subatomic punctuation. Building blocks like syllables in language together. create Religion. words. To find this out, no now we know why techniques. everything holds together. An invisible and field has no religious meaning. Techniques limitless as quantum God, physics for damn. reasons way Big beyond thing. the understanding the of you and me. Not God, mass. just God damn. Beyond. Big Bang, the universe whiz kid finds mass. Not God, just non-damn. Because there's empty always Big something bang. smaller would than what happier. omnipresent, non-zero empty, empty space would be happier without the God nickname. Because a symmetry you thought was the smallest element of that thing. A symmetry breaking machine with no substance as substance without examples is still substance. No in fact, there is no such no thing limit. as a thing, no, number. no limit, no, no number occupying the quantum state. What if proof of, of the find humans. does affect humans? It's more in fact, like there is what no you such thought thing. It's more like on what you thought you saw on LSD. No no Turn it off, and the universe evaporates. Higgs and his goddamn theory. No ideas, no ideas, but in things that don't really exist. Your bird swallowed its cage. Just one more step to more theories that don't really exist your bird swallowed its cage you're just one more step to more theories now you were ahead of me and then all of a sudden you came <laughs> to be behind me <laughs> so if you have never understood the Higgs boson particle uh, now you have you can it's totally clear now right why you never understood it. This this was like not just live poetry. This is like live science experimentation <laughs> here in Minneapolis at the Walker. <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you so much. No, no, th- thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. And now we're going to open it up to yeah. questions from the audience. And just to remind you, please wait for a microphone from our ushers. Raise your hand, and they'll come present the microphone. I was talking to Maria Damon's class earlier, and I reminded them that questions really can be about anything. It doesn't just have to be about what you just heard, right? Living your life or how we do it or how we don't do it. Uh, 
Hey, is there any questions? Boring. (laughs) 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 Yes. He's waiting for the microphone. Mic check. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the Helens of Troy. Yes. uh, Just curious as to what you did in order to get to know the Helens uh, to the degree that you needed to to to, uh, write the poetry. Uh, I put an ad. Oh, I put an ad in the local paper, which for that city was the Troy Record. And uh, it said, calling all Helens. And uh, I found 15. And uh, I took their pictures. And then I interviewed them. And I told them what I was planning to do. So they thought I was a little bit crazy. But uh, they were kind of complimented by the fact that you know, somebody like that one Helen said that somebody was interested in them purely because of their name. So that's what I did. Yeah. One over here. Uh, this is for Bernadette. Are we you a poet? I'm sorry. You? I can't see you. That makes two of us. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, okay. Uh, you were a poet in New York City. Do you think it's possible for any one poet to capture the, the mood of New York City? <laughs> well, that's a really strange question. <laughs> okay, I'm going to answer your question with a question. Why would anybody want to? <laughs> now you have to answer. <laughs> Well, um, there's this thing called motion poems. Some people did a uh, mm. the, the best of the American poetry. They turned them into films. Yeah. And somebody did a poem on New York that captured New York, but there's just too much going on in New York for any one poem to do it, I guess. So what's your question? What is yours? <laughs> I think Walt Whitman did an excellent job of that. But nowadays, nobody can afford to live there who writes poetry. <laughs> so, I mean, really, what? how could there be a person who would write that poem? <laughs> I mean, unless they're rich, right? Hmm. Still some cheap That's true. That's true, but then how could you capture the essence of New York City from Brooklyn? (laughs) I mean, well, it would be the essence of Brooklyn, right? But, yeah, all the poets I know who live in New York City live in Brooklyn. I don't know any poets who still live in Manhattan except the really wealthy people who are really aging, too. Because you can't be wealthy if you're still... Well, maybe you can. I was going to say if you're still young, but I guess that's not true. I'm sorry, was that... Did that answer your question? Yeah, that that was a start. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Mm. Mm. Well, I could probably hear you. Mm. But it wouldn't be a matter of record then. (laughs) Um, You had mentioned the poetry school on your porch. (laughs) And you said you were going to talk about it now, so... Would you like to join? (laughs) 
Yes, would you I like would, to be a, a member fact, yes, I would. of the porch school? Do I have to move to New York? No. <laughs> what, what are no, porch but you should appear on my porch at some point so I could indoctrinate you. Can right? I send a picture? What? Can I send a picture? Yes. <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> I'll get your email address afterwards. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but Bernadette, why... Why teach people outside of a school or institutional environment? You've done that for a long time. I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think it's interesting because poets, for the most part, are beyond uh, groups. And uh, I think it's interesting to get them together, you know, not in a group like the language school or the New York school or whatever school is and call it the porch school. And your only requirement is to be on my porch or, in your case, to send your picture, which I will take out and stare at on my porch. LAUGHTER I mean, I think it's the best school in the world, <laughs> really. New York City, the center of the universe, that's just not true. It's never been true, but especially not now. I mean, there's so much amazing poetry that I never even knew about here in Minneapolis. So, I mean, how could you ever doubt that there was poetry in the world beyond those, you know, famous places or previously famous cities. You know, that's all I'm saying. Mm. So, anything else? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have a chat out there. Thank you.